Hi everybody, this is Brian James from rhino3d.com and in this video I'll be taking you through the process of modeling and rendering an earring design using Rhinoceros for Mac. Now I'm starting with the small objects millimeters template and I'll maximize my right view. Each one of these major grid lines here is 10 millimeters long. I'll pick the curve command and I'll start drawing an S shape which will be the ear wire or fish hook connection on the back of the earring that goes through the lobe. And I want to make a pipe around this, but I want to be able to tweak the curve and have it update the pipe, so I'll click History. So History will be enabled for the next action. And then I'll click and hold on the box icon here and I'll get this fly out and I'll go down and pick Pipe Round Caps. I'll pick the curve and I'll type 0.5 for my radius at the beginning and if I press enter it'll use the same one for the end and then enter again. I'll select the pipe and lock it so I don't move it and then select the curve and turn on the control points. And You can turn on the control points with the F10 key. The points on command will also do it and if your function keys aren't automatically working like function keys. You can switch your OS X settings to make the F keys always function keys if you want. Otherwise you can probably just hold down that function key on the keyboard in unison with F10 and that will turn on your control points. And you can see how now I can control point edit the curve and it updates the pipe. You can also drag a fence selection like that and move more than one point at a time. And I'm utilizing the gumball, which is this X and Y manipulator that we see in the right view. If gumball's not on, you can still move the points around just by clicking and dragging. All right, the next portion of the design will be a dangle hanging from the ear wire here. And that will start with a straight line, and I'll use grid snap. So you can use the line command or just click on that polyline icon. And I'll make this line um, six millimeters long. It's not terribly important. I just want to use it as a starting point here. Now I want to make a helix that wraps around this line. So there will be a central column to the dangle and then a helix so it wraps around itself. I'll click and hold on the curve icon. And in the flyout there's helix. So this is the helix command. And if you look in the command dialog, you can see there's an around curve option. An important note is that options in the command dialog will have an underscored letter. So you can simply just type that letter and press enter in the midst of the command and it'll run that option. So A and enter then asks me to select the curve. And I'll make it two millimeters wide, like that. I'm going to turn off my grid snap, select the helix, and scale this down until the peaks of my helix are roughly one millimeter apart. You can see the distance right there. And I can drag all this stuff down just a little bit. There we go. Next I want to make an arc and so I'll click on the arc icon here. In the start point, I want to use an end O snap. So here are my object snaps I have end checked. So when I mouse over the end of that straight line we drew, I see the word end pop up. So that'll be the center. And then I want the arc to start straight out to the side here. And that's where this ortho option in the toolbar comes into play. If you click on ortho, you can only move side to side or up and down. You can also turn on ortho on the fly by holding down the shift key. So left click and then shift again and then left click. And you can scale this uniformly by scaling with the gumball and then holding down shift. So something along those lines is good. Now I'll go into perspective and I want to zoom in on this area so I'll type ZSA which is zoom selected all viewports and I'll press enter. 
And I want to blend between these two. So I'll use two different types of blends here. And I'll click and hold on the fillet icon and use Arc Blend first. And the command dialog tasks you with picking the ends of two curves. So the first one will be our arc, and the second one will be our straight line. And you see two arcs, so it's blending using arcs only. And you can left click and hold and drag that around change where that arc ends up. Now there's two options. In Arc Blend, I'm going to use both of them, Trim and Join the Result. Next I'll use Adjustable Curve Blend right here, and I'll click on the end of this one, and then the end of this one. And the same goes here. You can just adjust these points as you see fit. I like to move the central one on each handle, and that'll keep the spacing between the first and second and second and third points even, as you can see. And those represent your continuity options, positional, tangent, and curvature to the adjacent curves, one and two. I'm also going to use Trim and Join again, and I'll say OK. And then I'll select the joined curve now, and I'll run that pipe command again. I can right click and pick pipe round caps from a flyout of recently used commands, and just enter and enter and enter. I'm going to go into shaded mode here in my display panel. And that'll be just fine. Now the reason I said it doesn't matter too much, the length of that initial line, is that we can do something called sub-object modeling here. And uh, that's selecting this half sphere. You see it here. I can hold down Shift and Command and click there. And that allows me to drag down that half sphere, and I can change that length of the dangle like that. I'll rotate this, and I want to rotate it 90 degrees, so I can hold down Shift, and it snaps to 90, and I'll just drag that up into place like this.